Greetings, Game Reactor Nation. I am Maunus, and today we are at a PlayStation Pro themed event here in London, speaking to Michael Denny uh, from Sony Worldwide Studios. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, let's uh, kick off with the questions. We have limited time here, so I wanted to ask you first, with the introduction of the PlayStation 4 Pro, there are now several tiers or several SKUs, several choices for players out there who want to experience their games on a PlayStation 4. What kind of freedom is there in terms of developers? Uh, what can they do to enhance their experiences beyond like frame rate and resolutions and these kinds of things, like visual-wise, gameplay-wise? Thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, the key word you said for uh, our players is choice. You know, that's, uh, I think, always a great thing uh, for consumers, for gamers, to offer them as much choice as possible. And at PlayStation, I think it's always been a big part of our DNA that when innovation comes along, we want to be able to um, get that out to our gamers as soon as possible. So, interestingly, you ask about where, where that leaves uh, the development community. Well, it was really important this time, whilst offering an enhanced gameplay experience for our gamers, but for the development community, the options we're giving them to enhance their games are really easy to implement for them. So there's going to be no split in the PlayStation 4 development or exclusive titles for Pro. They're just going to be enhanced for the new system. So going back to what this means for developers, there seem to be two stories or two theories amongst developers out there. One is that it's kind of like developing for a PC, that you can just tune up the visuals ever so slightly to create two SKUs of the games or two versions, one for the regular and one for the pro. Whereas others think that this is more like complete, uh, making two completely different games. Does this represent like a challenge for developers or do you see this as a problem going forward, getting games out the door? No, from my experience, um, the development teams uh, I'm talking to uh, are super excited by the options they have. And we're not prescriptive at all at um, PlayStation and certainly in Worldwide Studios of, we want, of what we want to see the dev teams do uh, with the extra power. We leave that to um, their vision. They understand the games best, you know, whether they want to go for higher graphical fidelity, whether they want to improve frame rates, and obviously on the 4K versions, make them um, play on 4K and HDR TVs as best possible. So we're seeing a bunch of uh, games here today that all have received or will receive PlayStation 4 Pro patches that uh, takes extra benefit from, from, the, uh, from the improved hardware. But uh, in terms of PlayStation VR specifically, how does the games imp improve uh, for VR in particular? Yeah, so, so obviously with VR, um, uh, the, the screen isn't 4K HDR, but you can make improvements for uh, the VR experience as well. And those can be graphical experiences, uh, graphical improvements, and also frame rate improvements as well. So again, it'll be down to the uh, individual dev teams and what they think is best for their game. So 2016 has been a pretty wild year for PlayStation, the launch of PlayStation VR and a bunch of cool titles coming from uh, Worldwide Studios. But 2016, uh, I mean 2017, already looks pretty stacked. What is the strategy in terms of new releases? Yeah, so, um, you know, like you say, uh, we're so excited about uh, the new games coming up uh, next year. Um, not going through all of them, but, but obviously uh, Horizon, um, I work with the, the guys at Gorilla uh, such a lot, and that game is shaping up so well. I was over in Amsterdam the other week, and, um, y you know, that is going to be such a great game. But, but there's so many other games um, coming out for us uh, for next year. It's going to be an exciting time to be a PlayStation fan for sure. So one thing that I think is on a lot of gamers' minds is uh, scalability, uh, particularly between these two new platforms. Uh, how do you make sure, what kind of strategies is there in place to make sure that the PlayStation 4 Pro version of a game impresses visually, but it still runs in a acceptable or a, a impressive way on a regular PlayStation 4? Yeah, so, so, so again, we, we, we go back to the, the fact that we're giving choice uh, to the consumers and what experience they want to have, but, but we trust in um, the creators of games and the type of games they're making to make the right decisions on how that can be improved and showed, shown off the best on PlayStation 4 Pro. I mean, you've got two great examples at the presentation before from Polyphony of what they're doing with GT Sport and with Team Ninja and what they're doing with Neo. And that's very much what it's going to be like, uh, different implementations for different games from different developers. So, as uh, was mentioned in the, uh, in the keynote, for the first time, or something akin to the first time, Sony is introducing a choice of several consoles to choose from in like some somewhat in the middle of a generational cycle. 
Do you see this as a first step uh, in a in a s another direction for console manufacturers that it could be more like the phone or a tablet market where you introduce slightly better models to keep sort of the energy high midway through a cycle? Well, it's an interesting analogy to uh, PC and, uh, and, and the phone market. You're right that I think consumers um, are getting more used to a cadence um, of an uplift uh, in the technology more often. So for us, it's an exciting um, time to be able to do that for um, our PlayStation 4 fans to, to mid-cycle say, we have the ability, we have the technology to improve the experience for those players who want to improve it. And uh, the reaction we're getting so far from the community is there's a lot of excitement out there for it. So we're very much looking forward to November the 10th to get the system out there. So going back to uh, what uh, the generational cycle, do you see this as a a sort of a that you have prolonged the the life the life cycle of the PlayStation 4? Can, can, is there now a longer while until you will introduce the next piece of hardware? If you are going to do that, and what's it going to be like moving forward? So for now, we're just excited about launching PlayStation 4 Pro next week and what that will bring. You know, mid-cycle, as I say, it's unprecedented uh, for us in a console, fly console life cycle. So, you know, that, that um, heightened experience for those gamers who want it is going to resonate um, to a high level, we're sure. So a lot of games are receiving PlayStation 4 Pro uh, patches, and I'm sure you are speaking to and dis discussing things with all kinds of developers out there. Um, what is the strategy in terms of speaking to these developers and getting PlayStation 4 patch p patches uh, on the table? Yeah, well, cl clearly that comes from a number of directions. Firstly, talking to um, the dev teams and the publishers, which games are they excited about um, to enhance for PlayStation 4 Pro, but obviously listening to the PlayStation community as well, and you, you, you can get a sense of um, the excitement around some of the big and most uh, best-loved games on PlayStation that would love to uh, enhance the experience for Pro. All right, so uh, can I, one, one last, okay. Um, one last question. Um, a lot of games, I think a lot of gamers are really excited and surprised that games that have already released are now receiving new life via their PlayStation 4 Pro patches, something like Infamous First Light and Uncharted 4. Uh, is this something we will be seeing more of going forward that developers that already have released their games can put on PlayStation 4 patches without much fuss? Well, I'd like to think so. You, you know, when they, when they hopefully see the success of these games, why not? You know, these are great experiences, these games. We can enhance them for PlayStation 4 Pro and offer fans and uh, consumers alike uh, the chance to play those games. Why not? So uh, thank you so much for talking to us. And uh, please uh, stay tuned for a lot more PlayStation 4 coverage coming up in the, in the days to come. It's going to be an exciting time. Thank you.